guys, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough. Um, how are you guys going today? Okay, so Yum Yum Box has arrived. So today's date is actually the 2nd of February. This is January's box, which arrived 28th of January, I do believe, if I recall correctly. Um, most people get these around about the middle of the month. I've got this one kind of late. So... The hint with this one, the land with the largest castles. Um, I did see where it was from, but then I've forgotten. So, um, yeah, because some of the boxes that I watched unboxings were a while ago. <laughs> so, let's get this open and let's see where the land with the largest castle is. Oh, wow. Poland. Cool. Right here. Oh, oh. Ooh. Okay. There's dark chocolate in here already. I can see it. Okay. So, in there you still have the official Yum Award. So, you can work out what's um, what you like best, the second best, the worst. Um, and that is the first. <laughs> cool. First look. So, let's move this box to the side. And work our way through Poland snacks. Okay. Who's from Poland? Frederick. Oh, Chopin. Chopin was here. Um, okay. The local language, Polish. Okay, so here we go. Let's start. It's cool, Leo. Let's start with the Monster Munch. which is a salted potato snack. Okay, let's see what this is saying about it. Fun fact, every year the average pole consumes over 250 pounds of potatoes. That's more than the weight of a baby elephant. <laughs> mm. So how exactly are all these taters eaten? Well, there's pierogi, potato stuffed dumplings, plucky, don't ask me to pronounce that, potato pancakes, mashed potato dumplings, and plum stuffed cotton balls. But as far as our snacks go, there's one clear standout, Monster Munch, with their light and airy crunch, perfect sprinkling of salt, and ghoulishly fun shape. These potato crisps are nothing short of a national treasure. In fact, when we picked up this product from its Polish factories, one of the workers smiled and said, the Americans are getting the best of the best. I'm Australian, so I hope to think that. Um, scissors. It's a very light, very light package. I do like that box. How cute is that? So, here we go. First sniff doesn't smell too bad. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's see if I can line it up with my face. No, oh, no. God, if I do that. Uh, there we go. How's that for a good mask? Okay, enough mucking around. Taste of it. light very light doesn't taste like it's a potato though doesn't taste like a potato chip it's been it's really puffed up um, almost like a rice cracker but yep yummy so far top of the list but then that's like because there's only the one <clears throat> so Togo Delish Meringues. Okay. Let's see if I can show that there. Cookies with creamy nut filling and dark chocolate drizzle. Okay, let's find this. Oh, wow. <laughs> How big's that box? Mmm. 
hazelnut cream filled meringue dipped in dark chocolate I don't know whether I'm, I'm going to like this because I love meringues so let's see what the dark chocolate is like okay oh, excuse me here's a challenge name a cookie that's lighter or crispier than meringues trick question you can't unless you answered Bezzy, the Polish word for meringues. Polish meringues are among the most delicate cookies in the world, made with only whipped egg whites and sugar. But despite their simple ingredients, these sweets are far from easy to make. The sugar and egg must combine very slowly, then whisked, it whisked, whisked extremely rapidly to create an airy foam. Only when this perfection fluffiness is achieved can the form be baked into the light, crispy cookies we know and love. And this particular meringue has been has even more to offer a smooth hazelnut cream and rich dark chocolate drizzle that brings us to challenge number two resisting the urge to eat the entire package in one sitting okay yep it's actually got a perforation there for you to pull up but i can't get I can't open it. <laughs> no, I can't open the box properly. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh gosh, not even that's doing it. I'm going to have to rip this box open. There we go. Oh my goodness, look at how tiny that is. This big box. And look how tiny they are. Okay, let's give them a go. Sniff test first. Oh, actually they smell good. They do smell good. Okay. Looks like only a little bit of meringue. I think they like the amount of meringue, the rest of it's biscuits. Can really smell the dark chocolate, so we'll see how we go. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to focus on that for you. What if I go like that? Um. The meringue is so light you don't notice it. Again, the filling is a bit hazelnutty, but the dark chocolate is overriding it. So the meringue is more, I don't know. Well, oh, I'm looking forward to that. When you look at how tiny it is, so there's that thick filling in the middle there's no real meringue taste to it so it must be that light and airy that you don't taste it no not really eager not really liking that one okay on to the next one anybody that's out there that can read that but let's have we go here because this is the only way I can read these blue labels dark chocolate covered vanilla marshmallow stop with the dark chocolate oh well. marshmallow coated in chocolate might sound delicious but probably not inspiring that's about to change you see, in 1851, Carl Ernst Wendell founded a chocolate company which passed down to his grandson, John Wendell, during World War II, when Nazis seized control of Warsaw's food supplies and schools. Jan produced food for hungry citizens and turned his factory into an underground teaching hub. He even implemented welfare policies for his workers, including a cafeteria and hospital. 
Outside of his efforts during the war, Yarm best known for one sweet innovation, Patasi, named after a Greek idiom meaning an unobtainable delicacy. This soft, fluffy marshmallow treat has been famous in Poland and the rest of Europe since Jan first created it in 1936. Inspiring, right? Okay. Dark chocolate coated marshmallow. Oh, we're doing it for you guys. Eating the chocolate, eating the dark chocolate for you guys. Why is dark chocolate such an overwhelming smell? <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, they're a fairly thick bar. <sighs> Spongy. Definitely marshmallow in there. Mm. I suppose it's not like marshmallow that I'm used to. Let's see if I can get it up there. It's a creamy marshmallow, and I'm only just tasting the dark chocolate, so the marshmallow is actually stronger flavour. But still not my cup of tea. <laughs> Definitely not my cup of tea. Oh, okay. Mmm. Sorry, guys. I'm not real keen on that one either. I know you, apparently you guys like the facial expression, but I don't like that some of these days. Oh, next one Dr. Gerald Apricot Mini Cake. See that? That's going to be dark chocolate on top. It's got to be. Okay. So it's a glazed sponge cake with cream filling and apricot jam. I was able to read that one. With this yum, you're getting a taste of lo a long time tradition in a brand new way. You see, the first Polish sponge cake recipe was documented in the Compendium Ficolonium, a Polish language cookbook written in 1682 by the head chef for Prince Alexander Lebanos. Lubin Omiski, but since then Polish sponge cakes have gotten way more innovative and one the one in your box is first hand proof more like a sponge cake sandwich this yum has super moist cake rounds filled with delicate cream and juicy apricot filling then the whole thing is topped with a decadent milk and white chocolate glaze <gasps> it's not dark chocolate <laughs> Put all this together and you've got a deliciously decked out sponge cake Prince Alexander never could have dreamt of. Okay, so that's milk chocolate and white chocolate on top, oh, which much better. <laughs> okay, smell test. Oh, it smells yummy. This one, I'm actually going to just cut it. I'm not going to break this. I'm going to cut this. Because I don't want to eat the full one. I'll only eat a quarter. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> and I'll eat the rest of it later. I have learnt already with these sponge cakes. If I don't like them, it's better off that I cut them. So, what's on the inside? There we go. We can see the apricot, and the cream filling, the sponge. Yeah, a little bit spongy, but here we go. Mmm, okay. Trying to work out what this makes me think of. I've had something very similar. Very similar. Yum, very nice. Okay, that one's there. This one's too long. That was yummy. I'll be going back to finishing that one off. 
Okay, next page. Here we go. Paprika, crunch sticks, crunch chips sticks. Uh -huh. Yum, 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 yum. That looks good. Okay. So, just because I can't read it. Paprika potato sticks. Over dinner tables throughout the US, you'll hear requests to pass the salt and pepper. But in Poland, you'll hear something different. Pass the paprika. Okay, you won't really hear pass the paprika since they speak Polish, not English, but you get the idea. The bright red powder from dried bell peppers is one of Poland's most beloved spices. It's used to add flavor and color to beef, fish, eggs, cream cheese, veggies, stews, salads, and of course, potato sticks. These sticks were totally ordinary before a generous dusting of Polish paprika came along and now they're probably addictive. In fact, you should probably get used to the hearing a new phrase in the dinner table, pass the crunch chips. Okay, um, Nathan already puts, when we he cooks chips, he will actually put a coating of paprika on the chips. So, but obviously that's slightly different to these. Let's see how we go. Oh, they smell good. So little kind tiny sticks in there. <laughs> okay, so Oh. Oh yeah. They're really nice. Oh, yum. Oh. We get these mini chips like this, so they're called French fries. We get these here in Australia, but not with the paprika on it. But it tastes more like tomato than paprika. There's a little bit of a spice to it, but, oh, yum. Excuse me in my nose. And that goes top of the list. Oh, here we go. There we go. Next, wow nut bar. Which is here we go there. Milk chocolate bar with salted salted peanut filling. At least it's milk chocolate. Yeehaw. It's been estimated that the average American eats four pounds of peanut butter per year. It's also been estimated that Europeans eat less than a tablespoon of peanut butter per year. We don't know where everyone is getting these peanut butter estimates from, but we do know they mean one thing. Outside the United States, United States peanut butter is not that popular. Peanut growers in the United States have been pushing the use of peanut butter in Europe for years, and their efforts have worked in Britain, Germany, and the Netherlands. Their next focus, pollen. Slowly, peanut butter has started popping up in Polish health food stores. And as you can see here, chocolate walls nut break combines melty milk chocolate with salty peanut filling for a classic duo that's working hard to make the poles into peanut butter converts. What do you think? Is this bar as good as Reese's or is it the reason why Europe is only eating a tablespoon of peanut butter per year? We eat peanut butter in Australia, but we don't eat, like Americans have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but we don't eat that. Okay. So this is supposed to be a milk chocolate. And I'm just gonna break a bit off. Oh no, it comes in little bar shapes anyway. Okay, I'm gonna break one off. And oh. all I can smell is a chocolate, and it actually smells like dark chocolate, but it's not. 
It's not nice. Nope. Nope. Well, not one for me. I don't know what it is. The chocolate doesn't taste right. I will say, Australian chocolate is different to anywhere else in the world. So, mm, in saying that, it's because Australian chocolate actually has an additive in it to prevent it from melting because of the Australian climate. So, chocolate tastes different. Us. That wasn't too bad, but it's not... I wouldn't actually, if I was in the shop and saw that on the shelf, I wouldn't, still wouldn't buy it. It's not something that I would buy. Okay, next one. Crackers. Ooh, ooh, yum. So what does that say? Crackers with black cumin and onion. You've never had a cracker this confusing before. What makes it so confusing? It all comes down to the main ingredient, black cumin. You see, black cumin seeds look like pepper, smell like fennel, and taste like nutmeg. Confusing, right? When the seeds first spread throughout India, the Middle East, and Europe, they picked up a few different names, black caraway, black cumin, fennel flour, nutmeg flour, and Roman coriander, just to name a few. But let's keep this thing simple. In Poland, this seed is known as, oh seriously, in the middle, see the Schwarz Kummel, ah. mm, I can't pronounce that one, and it's traditionally used as a, used to add a warm satisfying flavour to breads, rolls and crackers. You know the greatest thing about those confusing crackers though, after one bite, you'll be too busy saying, hmm, to call them anything at all. Okay. That's quite a heavy pack, though. Here we go. Off with the top. So what did they say? Black cumin seeds look like pepper, smell like fennel, and taste like nutmeg. So, do agree they look like pepper. I don't know what they smell like. They don't smell that good. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, they're really small. So they're that one. You can taste the cumin in there. I would be liking to put some camembert cheese on this. Um, that would be really good for uh, biscuits and dip, as a bicky and dip. Oh, I'm still beating the sweet stuff though. Okay. Oh, why is it my nose gets itchy when I do this? Reaction to the foods, I suppose. Okay, guys, before I get it out, can you pronounce that? Chocolate covered gingerbread with apple filling. Oh, Hunakizzi? I have no idea. There's no way I'm going to pronounce that. Okay, in 1825, Polish composer Frederick Chopin, then only 15, visited the city of Torum in a letter to a good friend. He spoke of all the amazing things he counted there. The ornate Gothic Kirk churches, the famous Leaning Tower, the spectacular Town Hall. Then he wrote, yet, of, yet all of this does not surpass the gingerbread. Now that's a pretty big compliment when you try this yum. You'll see what all the fuss is about. Polish gingerbread called Pionix was first made in Toron in the 13th century and has quickly become the country's most popular winter dessert. 
With this chocolate covered apple, la apple jam filled variety, you'll taste what made Chopin and all of Poland totally obsessed. You'll probably fall in love yourself. It's not heart shaped for nothing. Okay, let's hope all oh, those, they're fair size. Chocolate coated gingerbread. It doesn't say dark chocolate. <laughs> but something's right in the dog. Chocolate. I can smell the gingerbread. Okay. I think I can even smell a bit of the apple. <coughs> Okay, this one's one I'm going to cut. I'm not going to bite into this because if I bite into this, I'm going to end up taking too much. Okay, so let's look at the inside. You see, obviously, it's a, instead of gingerbread and the apple, it's only a thin coating of chocolate. It smells better when I, once I cut it. Okay. There's a bit said it's not, but it's not. Um, okay, no. That's not a gingerbread that I like. Um, can't even taste the apple. The gingerbread is overpowering even the chocolate. But, mm, no, not for me. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Put that. <clears throat> yeah, no, not for me. That. I like gingerbread. I like apple. Um, but th there was no real taste of apple there. A lot of gingerbread, but not gingerbread that I like. I don't know. How do I describe it? Oh. Wowl Milks. Milk chocolate bar with sweetened condensed milk filling. Okay. Look at the front of this yum package. You'll see a tube of toothpaste. I didn't see one on the front package. Nope, didn't see it there. Okay. Look at the front of this Yum's package and it's sure that see a tube of toothpaste. Nope, that's actually a tube of sweetened condensed milk in Poland. These tubes are extremely popular, especially with younger generations. Local squeeze a creamy substance onto ice cream, fruit, cakes, coffee, or even directly into their mouths. Don't judge. The US is a country that put cheese in just put cat that put cheese into cans. I've been guilty of putting, eating condensed milk straight from a tube or straight from a tin. Yum, 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 yum. With this yum, you get the experience with the local favourite, covered in a thick layer of milk chocolate. Now take another look at the package and you'll see the words extra smack. That means extra flavour. And as you're about to find out this melt in your mouth, yum, sure lives up to the phrase. Okay, hang on. The picture, see the picture there? It's toothpaste, but it's not toothpaste. Okay. Oh, extra smack. <laughs> mm, okay, looking forward to this because I love condensed milk. And that actually does look, let's squeeze this out, does look like milk chocolate. Okay. Break a bit off. There we go. Oh, I don't know. All right. Mm. There is one. Um, excuse me for a moment. Okay, guys, sorry. No, oh. 
that was oh, overly, overly, overly sweet. No, couldn't eat it. No. Um, I could slightly taste the condensed milk, but that's just wrong. That's wrong. Like, there, no, that's wrong. Oh, that's the worst one I've had out of this box so far. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Regain myself. I'm. Look at this. this. It's all the snack foods, all the savouries that are winning out of everything. Okay, and the next one. Beskidzi Paluski. Okay, let's see if we can read that. Pretzel sticks with poppy seeds. Okay. Just as you associate poppy seeds with bagels, the same is true for the Polish. Poppy seed coated red rings called Obwazenk Krakowski have been a local sensation since the 1300s. 150,000 are sold in Krakow every day, but in Poland, poppy seeds aren't just limited to bagels. Locals enjoy poppy seed rolls, poppy seed filled wedding cakes, and even poppy seed pasta. To Poles, there's no recipe that couldn't, couldn't use some poppy seeds. With these pretzels, you get a taste of the local phenomenon and discover that poppy seeds are delicious on more than just bagels. Move over, Parmesan. Maybe you'll want poppy seed on that. Maybe it's poppy seed that you want on your pasta. Okay. <laughs> uh, see that, the poppy? Now, that's it. Oh, I'm looking forward to these. I like pretzels. And I like six. So let's see how we go. Okay. Oh, a bit of a funny smell, but. All right, so we got the pretzel. Pretzel, you know, obviously taste. But it's really surprising because you're expecting salt. When you eat these, normally the sticks are salted. There's no salt. Poppy seeds aren't bad. Hmm. <laughs> oh, they're nice. They are nice. Really nice. Mm. They're good. Put them about there. Mm. Okay. Come on, them. They are nice. Did like them. <clears throat> okay. In here we now have a yum bag. The yum bags. When you get them, generally lollies in here. You know the phrase, good things come in small packages. The yum bag is that phrase embodied. Okay, so let's have a look at what's in the yum bag. These are lollies in here. Okay. Let's put the bag aside. And which one are we looking at? So we have these two, these two, oops, and I am not pronouncing that. Chocolate candies with strawberry and black currant fillings. There's no way of, look at that, how can I pronounce that? Guys, read that out loud and tell me if you can pronounce it. If not, pop a comment below to say you can't. If you love berries, you'd, li you'd love living in Poland. Fresh strawberries are sold by the Koblarka, which is a bulk basket, bulk basket that's five times larger than the strawberry containers in US supermarkets. Black currant, a dark sweet berry native to the country, flavours everything from juice to meat dishes. You got a taste of this phenomenon with last month's gingerbread inside the yum yum box. So back to our earlier statement, if you love berries but don't live in Poland, 
you at least have these chewy candies. You'll find two flavours, black currant and strawberry, both enrobed in chocolate, and it's delectable final touch that turns them from good to very, very good. Okay, so, um, say the purple is the blueberry. Chocolate coated. So let's see how that goes. Ah, um, there we go. After I've bitten into it. Yes and no. Or oh, actually no. No. Um. Oh. Uh, yeah, chewy. There's a lot of chocolate on that. Yet again, it was dark chocolate. Um. But no, <laughs> that's even below this one, which I spat out. But I didn't have to spit that out because I didn't have that much in my mouth. And the last one, which is a cream fudge. Raul Carmission. So. This is a cream fudge. Ready? You're about to try Poland's most beloved candy, Krakowa or cream fudge. It's the most popular candy in Poland. Turns out the best things are sometimes the simplest. Krakowa is used using, made using just three ingredients, cream butter and sugar, whisked until thick, then poured into a sheet pan and cut into this candy signature rectangular shape. The result is a buttery caramel candy with a crumbly outside and a surprisingly soft inside. Our advice, take teeny tiny bites and let them melt in your mouth so the buttery sweetness lasts as long it pos as it possibly can. Okay, no idea. Let's see how I open these. Cream fudge, I love fudge. So let's see what happens. Let's see my reaction. <laughs> Okay. Oh. It smells good. Okay. Let's just cut a little bit off of that. Whoa. So there is a crunch to it. And when you actually chew into that crunch, that's really sugaring. So this is very similar to, um, well, condensed milk, but only slightly caramelized. Um, yeah, no, nope. uh, not rocking my boat, that one. Oh, okay. How bad is that? This is all right, so that was it for the pollen box. I will say, their savouries are fantastic. Their sweets, not so good. I'm actually starting to find that um, different countries with their sweets and their chocolate stuff is so different to what um, I'm used to that it really, I don't know, it just, just they don't seem to taste right to me. Um, but yeah. There we go. So guys, this is my second last box. I've got one more box to go, which is February. Um, we'll see how that one goes, um, but I won't be continuing on with these boxes. As much fun as they are, I can't hope punishing myself with some of these foods that I'm just not enjoying, um, unfortunately. So guys, I will say thank you for watching. Leave me a comment. Which ones do you like? Were you able to pronounce? some of the foods here or do you think you got pronunciation right or better yet how many did I stuff up trying to pronounce 
Um, so yeah, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, and let me know what you think. And uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, this is my new craft channel, but I thought I'd just try these as a subscription box. Um, you won't see me doing, you'll only see me doing one more of these boxes. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you for joining me. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, hit the thumbs up and thumbs down, and hit the bell so you're notified of uh, future videos. And bye for now.